In many ways, I think the ways that we develop as creative people mirrors the way that we develop through life in general. And in this video, I want to take an idea that Carl Jung gave us years ago, where he talked about the fact that he thought life was broadly speaking split into two halves. And he thought about it like a day. So in the morning, the sun will rise. And at some point, it reaches that midpoint, that zenith, where the sun sits at its highest point, and we call that noon. And then it starts to move into the second half of the day, which we would say is the afternoon. And if we think about life in this way, we can also think about our creative journeys in this way. And if we have that broad picture, we can learn to read the signposts along the way about where we are and what's really going on. Jung explains why it's important to know where you are on this journey with this quote where he says, we cannot live the afternoon of life according to the program of life's morning. For what was great in the morning will be little at evening. And what in the morning was true, at evening will have become a lie. As with most of these more philosophical videos I post on my channel, this isn't just for photographers, but anyone who does anything creative. So you might be a filmmaker, or a painter, or a sketch artist, a designer, a musician, a poet, a writer, it doesn't matter. I think our journeys, broadly speaking, evolve in these two halves. And if we learn to see them for what they are, we can take all the goodness out of each stage and learn to move on when it's the right time. So let's unpack Jung's idea a little bit. He says we all start in the morning of life. And in the morning, the important things to us are things like defining a sense of self and finding personal success for ourselves. So we want to carve out a nice social space for ourselves and work out who we are in relation to the people directly around us. And we also want to build a successful career for ourselves and be seen as a professional. And there's nothing wrong with that. We all start in that place and we all should. I've talked a little bit on this channel before about the role of our ego as creatives and why it's really important but also really dangerous. And this is the time in the morning of life where our ego really gets formed. It's our sense of self, both good and bad, as we try to work out where we fit in in relation to everybody else around us. And it's in the morning of our lives that we start to make a lot of important decisions for ourselves. So we think about where do we want to live? What sort of house would we like to live in one day? What sort of car would we like to drive? Uh, who do we want to partner with? What sort of person? Do we want children one day? Do we want pets in our house? What do we want our lives to look like? And we start to make decisions about what we believe broadly as well. So what do we think about society and how it should run? What does our politics look like? Um, do we factor spirituality into the way that we see the world? What's our philosophy about life? And one of my favorite authors, Richard Raw, uses the analogy of building a box at this stage of our lives that we use to contain all the ideas that we have about life, the universe, and everything, and how things work. So what does the morning of our creative journey look like? Well, it's the same really, isn't it? We're trying to define in exactly the same sort of ways. We're trying to work out what sort of artist do we want to be? What do we want our work to look like? And we start to obsess about things like techniques and we try and teach ourselves a load of techniques and try them out to define a style and we obsess about gear. What's the right tools exactly for us to be using for this work so that it looks exactly the way that we imagine it should look? And we look at the work of a lot of other artists that we respect and we start to steal tiny pieces of their work and incorporate it into what we're doing to define our own personal style and put out work that we believe represents exactly who we are in creative form. The mornings of our creative journeys can be really exciting times and I think they should be because we're just starting to get to grips 
with this art form that we've chosen and we're trying lots of different things out and all that potential of what our work could look like down the road is right in front of us for the taking. But it can also be a frustrating time because it's hard to grab that potential and it always seems to be slipping through our fingers. If you're like me, when I was starting out, I looked at so many tutorials trying to find those magic techniques so that everything would just snap into place and my work would look like what I wanted it to look like. Or I looked at gear reviews thinking if I got that lens on my camera, then my work would really pop and I did endless amounts of math with my salary to try work out, could I maybe afford it and would it do what I wanted? And some of those lenses I bought, but it never seemed to quite be there. So I was always moving forward and always learning, but that potential never seemed to snap into place the way I wanted it to. Let me take my portrait photography journey specifically as an example. When I was in the morning of that journey, I tried every technique in the book. When I was shooting with strobes, I'd use three, four, five light setups, and I'd be gelling different strobes with different colored gels to create splashes of color all over the place. I'd try things like Brenizer stitches, which was taking multiple shots so that I could stitch them together later to give a crazy depth of field and also a massive resolution image because I thought in my head, I'm not sure what I'm aiming for, but maybe one of these techniques will unlock a look that I can think of as a final product and that's my potential. That's the, the style that I'm after and I'm home and dry. I did it with post-processing too. I was trying every trick in the book in Photoshop and I was trying lots of different mixes of presets to find the right color mix because I didn't know enough to do colors myself yet. And I was hoping, I think, in all this for quick wins, just a formula that I could apply to my images that meant that every time I put an image out, people would be impressed with what I was doing. Of course, when I look back at the morning of my journey now, I can see what a mess I was making, but it was an absolutely necessary mess because I don't know another way to teach yourself in any art form, but to try a bit of everything and to see what sticks and to start choosing for and against different techniques as you take some distance from it and look back and decide whether you actually like what you've done until a style, a more mature style, slowly starts to emerge. This is all the work of the morning, all that exciting experimenting and choosing and defining and working out what you actually want to be. And I look back at my own stage and realize how essential that stage was and how much I learned from that time, even from the stuff I didn't choose to take with me. But I also remember how desperately impatient I was for results. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate. So how do you know when you're reaching the end of that first half, that morning, and you've arrived at that high noon? Well, Carl Jung was the first to talk about the midlife crisis, and he talked about it using this analogy of reaching the end of the morning and the sun reaching its highest point in the sky. And he said that that point was characterized by a lot of questioning, questions about what have I built in that first half? What did I construct in the morning? And was it really what I wanted? Have I made the right decisions or have I made mistakes in my choices? Have I built the right thing or the wrong thing? What does it all mean? Reaching that high noon point in real life can be a really scary moment because we're full of questioning and there's this internal war going on inside us as we look at everything that we built in life's morning and we decide, do I actually like the person that I've constructed? And more often than not, the answer to that is gonna be, well, a lot of it, no, I don't like, and I know I need to change it. And a lot of us are very scared of change. We often reach that high noon because of some specific crisis that happens to us. It triggers it. It could be us losing a job, or we lose our whole career for some reason, or our partner leaves us, or we lose a relationship that's really significant to us, or someone close to us dies. And what we do is we reach for that metaphorical box of answers we built for ourselves in the morning of life. That box that contains everything we believe about the ways that life should work. And we open it up and we start to reach into it to pull our answers to help us through this crisis and answer our questions. But we just have to be honest with ourselves and say that none of those answers specifically help our pain anymore. It just doesn't work. This for everybody is a really scary moment and some people handle it better than others. I mean, we have the stereotypical idea of the kind of middle-aged man who hits a midlife crisis and he, he starts acting a bit confused and he goes out and he buys a motorcycle and leaves his wife for a younger woman because he thinks that his confusion is going to be answered in just rearranging the superficial details of his life instead of admitting to himself deep down that everything he's built inside doesn't work anymore and that's where the work really needs to be done. Others go into complete denial and won't admit that what they built doesn't work and I think that leads to internalizing everything and it can turn into bitterness, especially down the road into your later years because you just haven't admitted to yourself that what you built doesn't work. So you start to close the world off. You don't want to face yourself, you don't want to face anyone else and you just start to kick people out. 
But the best of us, when we reach that high noon point, take it as our cue to move into the afternoon of life. So what does noon look like on your creative journey? Well, I think it's exactly the same. It's us looking at everything we built in the morning of our creative journey and realizing that no matter how many techniques we threw at this, no matter how much money we threw at buying the right gear and, and how much time we invested in defining a very neat style, it hasn't delivered us the success that we want with our work, however we choose to define that. We're starting to admit to ourselves that we're not getting the results that we want. We're not as popular as we want. People don't care about our work the way that we want to, and we're not really proud of it the way we wish we were. And maybe chasing after all the tiny quick wins and trying to get those footholds that would impress other people quickly wasn't the right approach. And we need to reassess and maybe start building something deeper. Just like in real life, that noon crisis point can be kicked off by a real world event. I know photographer friends who've lost their jobs as photographers and had to assess everything they built in that morning and was it moving in the right direction. I've had friends who've had all their camera gear stolen and then had to look and go, do I really need all this stuff to be able to make meaningful photography? And I've had friends who've had illnesses that meant they just physically weren't able to shoot the way they used to and they had to reassess everything they built up to that point and adjust. In my own creative journey, High Noon wasn't really a specific event, but just a creeping realization that perhaps what I built wasn't the direction that I wanted to go. In my portrait photography, for example, I started to realize that no matter how many techniques I threw at the wall, it didn't mean that I got hired more often, and it didn't mean that I produced work that I felt was really meaningful. I had to get honest with myself and admit that I didn't really even like the style of photography that I built for myself. It was too fussy and too complicated and if I was really honest, I knew that most of those techniques I put in there were really to impress other people rather than to be a tool to produce really meaningful work. All those years of experimenting and learning and teaching myself things and applying multiple lights and gels and lenses and heavy-handed editing techniques had only landed me at a place where I was a photographer who didn't like my own style and had no work coming in. And that was an incredibly frustrating and scary point where I had to assess what had I actually built. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. I was just looking at this box of tricks I built for myself and, and all these ideas that I had about what my photography should look like or how my career should progress and none of it was working out. And it was at that point, that was the one and only time in my life I've thought, I just want to walk away from this thing altogether. As with a midlife crisis, I could have just taken this as an opportunity to overcompensate and to run out and to buy a lot of fancy camera gear and think, I just need more stuff. If I get more stuff, then it will work. Or just gone into denial within myself and close off the rest of the world and just become very bitter, refusing to change and just being angry that the world wasn't giving me the success or the progression that I felt I was owed. But thankfully, I knew about this two halves dynamic. And I took that opportunity to read the signpost and realized that the afternoon of my journey was just around the corner. So what does the afternoon of life look like? Well, Carl Jung talked about it being characterized by a greater openness. We don't feel the need to desperately define things neatly anymore. We're more able to hold paradox and we don't have to put things into neat boxes. And we also start to slowly and patiently question what we built in life's morning and we start to let go of those things that we're honest with ourselves don't really work. We also start to simplify our lives out. And as we look around at all the things we've built in life's morning and get honest with ourselves, we can see the things that were just designed to show off and shout about who we are and define who we are in relation to everybody else and get people to pay attention to us as individuals. And in the second half of life, that's not really as important as in the first half. So we can start to let a lot of that stuff go and we can keep those things only that are meaningful and that we want to build into in the longer term. Jung actually had a term that he used to describe the process in the afternoon of life. He called it individuation, and he defined it as divesting the self of false wrappings. And I love that picture of the fact that we might have built stuff around ourselves in the morning of life that really doesn't fit who we are. And it's okay at this point to just pull that stuff off and get rid of it. And some people get confused because they hear individuation and obviously it sounds like individual. So they think it's becoming more of a separate individual in the afternoon of life. But a little bit of the opposite is actually true. In that afternoon, we're less concerned with defining who we are neatly. And we're more concerned with meaningful things, not just to us, but to those around us. Those who make it to the afternoon of life, and not everyone does, by the way, but those who do 
are the sages. They're the village elders of our society, those who've let go of their bags of tricks long ago, and they're no longer trying to define and let you know who they are. And they're now unthreatened, and they're able to be there for others instead in really profound and meaningful ways. So what about our creative journeys? Well, again, it's exactly the same. When we reach that afternoon, we're looking at that bag of tricks and realizing it doesn't work, and we're trying to work out what the meaningful stuff is that we built. We want to strip all of that excess off and just get down to the good stuff. And now we're going to patiently, because we know how long the road is, we can feel it now, we're going to patiently plug away at that stuff over time. One of the first things I did when I started to move into the afternoon of my photography journey was to get rid of a bunch of kit. A lot of you will have seen that video from a few years ago. I took three backpacks full of camera gear down to my local store and I got rid of a ton of Canon stuff and Fuji stuff and I simplified my kit down to one backpack that could do everything. I didn't buy the fanciest lenses because I knew that it actually didn't make as much difference as I pretended. So I stripped it right down to a set of light cameras and light lenses that would fit in one bag that I could take around and do all my work with because I'd let go of that idea that gear was the magic thing that was going to make my photography great. With my portrait photography, my lighting setup started to strip right down. All the colored gels came off. All the lights went in the bag except one. And now 90% of the portrait photography I do is just one light. And I started to look for more meaningful portraits to take, which is why on this channel you would have seen me go to Namibia to take portraits with the Himba tribe and then learn things about that and realize I need to push even deeper into meaning. And that's why I went back to South Africa to shoot three mentors of mine who now sit on the wall behind me. The next series of portraits I have planned are connected to me, again, perhaps even deeper, and I'm being more deliberate than ever about working out what I really want to say with my work. There's no flashy techniques that I'm going to use in this next set. It's not going to be fancy. It's going to be very simple to replicate in terms of the technical stuff that I'm doing, but I'm hoping that the meaning that I'm now building into my work is going to be something that actually fulfills me and actually means something to those who view my images. I don't want to make this sound like I have it all worked out. I know I still have a lot to learn and personally on my journey I consider myself with photography just past that high noon in the very early afternoon just trying to shed some of that stuff from the morning that I built that I know isn't really useful or meaningful and trying to build more meaning into my work and it took a long time you have to be patient with yourself don't rush that morning that morning for me with photography took a good 15 years and it wasn't wasted time everything I experimented with everything I built in terms of knowledge all those techniques I built go with me into that second half and I still use that knowledge regularly. You can't rush it, so enjoy wherever you're at. That's really important to remember. There's no good or bad stage. Both stages are absolutely essential and trying to rush from one into the other is a mistake. You have to do both stages fully and well. But the biggest reason I'm telling you this stuff is so that you don't give up when you reach your high noon because it's at that point that so many people throw in the towel. They just think to themselves, I've worked for so hard and for so long and I'm not seeing the results that I want at all. I look at my own work and I can feel the lack and I look around at other people and no one seems to care about what I'm doing. So has all this just been a massive waste of time? Instead of recognizing that it's at that high noon, if we take those questions in our own head seriously, and work them through, things could potentially get really good from here on out. So if you find yourself at high noon in your creative journey, the next part will be painful because you have to let all that faith that you put in all those processes you've constructed start to crumble and that hurts a little bit. And you also have to be really patient with yourself because the building you're going to do in the next stage is going to be deeper, so it's going to take more time. So you have to give it that time and give yourself that patience. But I promise you this, if you start to move through to that afternoon of life, it's where all the good stuff that you will do really happens. <laughs>